Hey everyone, I'm Eric Thomas of Eric Thomas Studios, and today we'll be talking about 3D textures in Photoshop. First thing before we can get started is that we're going to need a 3D model. If you don't have one on hand, I'll be including a download link in the description where you can grab the model I made in Blender just for this tutorial. All you need to do with a 3D model, assuming it's an OBJ, DAE, or similar file, is drag it into Photoshop or into the icon for Photoshop on a Mac. The new file window will open up and you can set the dimensions for the canvas size you want to use. When you hit OK, your model will be in a Photoshop document ready for texturing. To work with the textures themselves, we'll need to open up the 3D window under the Windows menu up top. When opened, we'll have access to all parts of a 3D scene, including the cameras, lighting, and the objects themselves. And under those 3D objects are our materials. These will act as our textures for this video. To edit them, we'll have to first click on one of those materials, and then open up the Properties window. And here, we have every part of our material. With a material selected, we can see and change all maps or textures that make up that material. Up at the top left, we have Diffuse Maps to work with first. This is the color or image applied to a model, and is basically the visual that shows up under everything else we apply. Under that, we have specular maps. These are typically black and white images, which sets how shiny an object appears. In a spec map, any area that's white will shine more, and black areas will be flatter. The next map, Illumination, is a new type of map to Photoshop that I haven't actually been able to find a straight answer on. What I've been able to gather, I think, is that this applies a glow to a model. But again, as of this recording, that one I'm not completely sure of. And the last one of this group is the ambient color. Any reflective surfaces, by default, will reflect the light and other objects around them. The color you set here will be applied to those reflections. Going down, we have more maps for how light will interact with the model and the lighting to the scene. The first of which is Shine, at least for Photoshop CC. Shine will determine how spread out the light is on a model, with low shininess giving it more light and less focus, which makes it look blurrier. Higher shininess will mean there's less light on your model's surface, but it will also be sharper and much crisper. Next up, Reflection Maps will give a model surface a reflective coating. This will show other 3D objects in the scene and an environment map on the model. The higher you push it up, the more like a mirror your material will be. It should be noted that all of these so far will still look a bit flat on your 3D model though, if they're on a flat surface. Since pretty much no real surface is completely smooth, this can be a bit of an issue at times. At the same time, Adding every small bump and detail into a model's geometry is going to not only be a nightmare, but it'll be a huge drain on any system that's rendering it with the thousands of extra polygons or tries it adds. This is where our next two types of map come in, by letting us fake those tiny details while keeping the model simpler and much less stressful for everything in the process. Our roughness is pretty self-explanatory. This defines how rough a surface is, letting us fake small detail into the model that work with the light and reflection. A roughness map will also usually be a grayscale image, where black is red as smooth and white increases the roughness. The higher you drag the number here, the more prominent the bumps will be. When using this, keep in mind what you want your object to look like. If it's supposed to be newer, the roughness will be higher than something that's older and more worn down by use. But roughness is for very small, almost microscopic changes. It adds up to something you can see, and it'll affect the rest of the model, but it's a subtle change. But if you need something more noticeable, like scales on a snake for example, we have bump maps. Or height maps if you want to keep it easier to remember what these do. 
These are also grayscale, where any black areas will raise the model's surface up, and white areas will be flatter. Any area that's 50% gray will act as the normal height of the model, and the closer to either color you get, the higher or flatter it'll be. And as you move your bum map slider higher, the darker areas of the map will appear taller. For the next kind of texture we have, there are opacity maps. Also known as transparency or trans maps, this is a type of texture that will, you guessed it, change how transparent parts of your model are. This is another way of faking detail in your model without the extra geometry of actually cutting out parts of the model. In trans maps, Black areas will be invisible, while white areas will be completely opaque. Higher values on the slider will change how see-through those dark areas are. We can also do a different kind of opacity change with a refraction map. Refraction, like the transparency, lets you change how much light is passing through a 3D object. This is what lets us see through the material where either of these are applied. Where refraction is different, though, is that unlike the regular transparency, this lets us bend light. This is usually used for specific types of transparent materials, like glass or water. If you look through a bottle of water, you'll probably notice an odd thing, where whatever's behind the bottle looks like it's somewhere other than where it actually is. Going back to science classes, this is the refraction bending the light waves you're seeing. With the slider on this control, the higher your value, the more transparent the surface will be, and the more warped the scene underneath it will look. And lastly, we have our bottom two textures. On the left, there's the word normal. There's a whole video to be had on just normal maps, and the extra modeling you need to do to make one that's effective, but I'll try to keep it simple here. A normal map works sort of like bump maps, only where bump maps set height, Normal maps set depth. Here, black in your map will set a part of the model further back, while white will bring it forward, and 50% gray will again act as zero where things aren't changed at all. One thing to note here. Bump, roughness, and normal maps are, like I've said, meant to fake detail. They don't actually add geometry to your model. Which is really good, both for your time and any computer that needs to render your model. But, because the geometry isn't actually added, it's not really 3D detail. Looking at your model from pretty much any angled view will make it so the details look like they're there. Look at the model straight on though, and that detail will pretty much go away. This is something especially noticeable in video games, even on higher quality settings, although the higher budget, the better the textures, the more this can still be faked even close up. In something that's smaller scale, you might find brick walls where they actually have modeled out every dent in the grout between bricks in that wall. Play something open world, like Skyrim though, and you'll notice when you go up to a wall that the wall is actually flat, so your computer doesn't explode trying to constantly render the world around you. This is just something you'll want to keep in mind when you're doing a render in any 3D program using these and not actual geometry. All that out of the way, we have one more type of map to work with. An environment map is, put simply, your background. But your background here will only apply to 3D objects in your scene, and only when they have reflection and or refraction. This will make that background apply directly to the model's reflective surfaces. An environment map won't show up in your canvas, animation, or scene, depending on the program. You can add them to them separately, but as a map, it'll only apply to 3D objects in the same scene. Now, knowing all of this is some good foundation for what each type of texture does. But to actually add textures to these, we'll need to go over a bit more here. Like the file icon to the right of every one of these I just talked about, except for ambient. When you click on that icon, you'll have a few options. The top of these options is New Texture. Clicking on New Texture, you'll have a new file window pop up. Set the new file to the dimensions and resolution you want the texture to be, click OK, and you can make your texture image right in Photoshop here. If you already have texture images applied, 
You can get to the same place by double clicking the name of the texture down under the object in your layers panel. This is where you can edit any textures and I've done a whole separate video on doing that too which I'll have a card to here. We can also load a texture in. If you already have an image you want to use, you can use this option to bring it in and apply it to the part of your material you need to apply it to. Under that, there's also the option to remove a texture that's been added to start from scratch. And at the bottom of the menu, we have a list of image file names. These are the names of every texture image that's in the 3D layer you're working with. You can use this on any map to apply the same image to multiple textures. A bump maps image could be used for a normal map, for instance. Though generally, you'll want different images. Speaking of normal maps, there's an option under that menu too. You can generate a normal map from your diffuse map, which will take the texture you're applying and make a copy. Additionally, on the left side of your diffuse, spec, illumination, and ambient, you have another box. This opens up a color picker, where you can set the color that shows in each of those maps, if the lighting for the scene isn't white. And lastly, for this video, we have the top right of our textures options. Up here, we have a small box that gives us a visual preview of what our material looks like. If you click on this, you can open up the menu with some preset materials and quickly apply them. At the top of the gear icons menu, there are also the options to save the material we've made if we've made a custom one, and pick how the materials are shown. We can also load in new material files, reset back to these defaults you're seeing, and save a selection of materials as the file you can send out to others or take with you. And that was all the basics of using 3D textures in Photoshop. I hope you've learned something and had fun doing it. If you have any feedback, you can let me know with a comment or a message to ET underscore studios on Twitter. And I'm planning to be back here every Friday, including future videos on going into all of this individually and in more detail. So, if you enjoyed, be sure to subscribe. Have a great day, everyone.